meaningful from discussions, teaching, and uh, still without just assessing what's out there, looking at what impending evil cultic movement can look like in different forms. I pray that we will indeed use it, the information, to keep us alert and aware and help others more and others open the eyes of those who are blinded by this, this sheet of darkness that can sometimes cause some people to be not just misled, but hopelessly devoted. Bless the time in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What we started looking at last time is the marks of a cult. And we we'll just quickly breathe through that. And then we'll look at some more characteristics of cults. And also the cultic leader themselves. And uh, I don't know, coincidentally, um, there is a movie that came out today, which I watched uh, maybe two other times. Uh, for those who are watching TV, maybe three o'clock, um, Paul is based on a true story, the Elizabeth Smart story. Anybody heard about that true life to Elizabeth Smart, right? And she was kidnapped in the United States by a cultic leader, but he wasn't actually leading in a big movement. <laughs> it, but the idea was that whoever he, he was, I don't remember if it was his wife, and it started off with this woman, and I don't know if it was legally married to her, but then he kidnapped a young lady by the name of Elizabeth Smart. She was in her teens, smart. She was in her teens. And uh, I, I, I was listening, based on a true story, so it really happened, and I was listening to some of the things he was telling her. It started off with this young lady being very, you know, what that call her. She was resistant, that's what I was looking for. Her resistant, and so, and, and so. But I realized that after a while, he continued to pound some things in her head. And one of the things that she tried different times to escape, one of the things he kept pounding in her, in her head was that he was her salvation. And he quoted a lot of scripture, and some of it his name was Emmanuel. And I don't think the name was changed because it was true to life and based on a true story. So Emmanuel, and he would say Emmanuel means what God loves. So he kept saying he was her salvation, and, and then he said to her one of the times that, listen, I came to your house and I took you out of your, your home. God told me, God helped me to do that. Don't you see that? And I'm saying to myself, you know, so I don't know about you, but sometimes when I see some things, I get incensed, I get, we get brindled, because that's not so weird. It's like, poor God, the other part of the world slaps on you and says, you know, you know, I said, what, what is this? I'm not talking to girls, but these people. Sometimes I don't know if it is one extreme or another. If they are just simply crazy, or just too smart for their own good to manipulate people. But the idea is that after a while, interestingly, she became less and less resistant. He had her for months to the place where when it came down, thank God the police did not stop looking for her and friends and parents and all that. But, but it came up to the point where she started to get. He ruled her by two things, fear and brainwashing. So it came down to the point where he could take her, when he felt that he got her to a place where he could her. He kept her institution for a while until he brainwashed her. And then he started to take them out like a family in public, even though pictures were out that after the crew started to come in an investigation pointed to that this girl is missing and this could be the man that has her. I remember, didn't get to finish watching it, but I remember I watched it twice. I remember one of the times he went, he, he took them to a store. And when she got the opportunity to run or to just grab, to just say to the security, hey, I am Elizabeth Smart, these people kidnapped me. She was too fearful to do that. The movie ended though that the, 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 the search for her got real intense and the picture of this particular cult leader was p pasted all over, you know, especially that particular um, state. And uh, the police got to her. And this was how the police had to do it. 
the police, one police officer brought the cult leader away from the girl while the female police officer started to question her. She made sure that she wasn't looking at the man, the cult man. While he was trying to say, she's my daughter, she said, the other police officer restrained him, please stay over there. And she had to, the police officer, the female, had to block her vision from the cult leader and to say, are you in some kind of trouble? Are you Elizabeth Smart? You need to tell us if you are the person. And she hesitated for a long time, you know. If the police officer had not persisted and persisted, she would have gone away with the man. But the police officer continued to persist. We are here to help you. Until she finally broke down and said, yes, I am her. What, why am I telling that story? Because a real life thing. This is what the cults do. They brainwash you. And they also lead you by fear. So listen, we need to be able to identify any cultic movement that calls themselves a church or otherwise or a gathering. So what we said last week was that they approach the scriptures. You know, sometimes they have faulty or wrong interpretation, adding or subtracting from scripture, revering other writings as more significant than the Bible. We have to watch out for their attitude towards Jesus Christ. They deny his deity, that he's God, or sometimes they deny his humanity. Then uh, their concept of salvation is very weird. Like the man, like the man uh, Emmanuel, he didn't remember anything, true story. So he says, I am your salvation. <laughs> what burns me, Brother Quinn, out of all of this is when they use God and say, God help me take you from your home. He said, they can't tell life on God, you see? Listen, this is why, this is why we have been looking at how God is going to deal with false prophets and cults and all of that from last year into this year. And uh, this is why you realize that there's a major judgment coming for them. And he speaks of that in this time and the thereafter. The idea of he speaks of it very, very... Uh, like destructive judgment because remember cultic movements a lot of them the cultic leaders in particular they are seeking to tell life on God or they're using God to manipulate people and say God tell them this and God tell them that God does not take lightly to people using his name so you better remember that so the, the concept of salvation is always if it, they believe in more than one path to salvation they trust in someone else or something else for their salvation their allegiance to someone or something, and they, they normally have an allegiance to someone or something other than God Almighty, the God of the Bible, the creator of the universe. They surround their beliefs and their practices and authority around a leader or a founder. And they give allegiance to a person's opinion instead of God's commandment. And then this might be the final one on, on the marks that we looked at la last Sunday night. Uh, strange or improper rituals and practices. Sometimes they engage in sacrifice of people and animals and so forth. Secret or strange initiation ceremonies. So those are some marks of a cult. And one more, sorry. Unnecessary, unnecessary secrecy and exclusiveness. You know, hidden address or agenda. Partiality to some people while prejudice towards others. And there's a members only mentality. Remember, if they're using God and sometimes they're using the Bible, you don't see that kind of secrecy in the Bible about hiding your... What the Bible says, don't hide your, your, your light under a bushel. Let it shine. You know? So there should not be any secrecy if they claim that they are Christians. So let's move on to something fresh. Yes, brother. Yes. Yeah, Pastor, um, the approach to Scripture, is it that the marks of a cult, they have to carry see all these marks or could it be that they call they just only have one or two marks what what is that? do we have to have all of that do they have to have all of those marks no they don't have to have all but they need to have some because you we because if it is just it can be just one and some don't they demonstrate all there are some who demonstrate all and some who demonstrate some. But it cannot be just one though. Because if, if, if it is just one like for instance. You approach the scripture. If, that, if you pluck out that one. You might end up a call. Hey, certain, certain people denomination cults. 
because the approach to scripture can sometimes fall into the same problem some we have in our church <laughs> misinterpretation yes yeah, yeah it's it's interesting because when you look at the the adventists yeah and you look at the the, the talk to them they talk about lng yeah white lng and, white right and they revere their whole up her writings and whatsoever you know yes they, but yet again all the other stuff for example salvation all of that recognize that jesus is god and so forth they do all of that accept all of that you know yes and so forth so i am a bit here concerned whether i should put them in that category yes <laughs> or what yes you know because and it's and I, to be honest with you it's not all of them really um elevate LNG white yes right into that yes. you know it's not it's not all but that true. is true you some know? of them don't some of them don't some of them don't. wise up <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know and, all and, right. and you finish you finish yeah that's it i was just want to bring that up and, and i said it last week what you asked and i'll say it again now to make sure just a, a third time too that we're not hereby saying that some persons who demonstrate one of this is that we're going to call everybody a cult we even said it too in two sundays ago that not everybody who is cultic is occultic remember what occultic is anything that that gets into demonology or mysticism and so forth you have some cults that, that are not into that and often on sacrifice and all of that but they are cults because of their deviation to scripture and some other things that we're mentioning no so what you need to do is that's why by the way if you notice we just talked about marks now we're going to talk about characteristics and then we're going to talk about the characteristics of a cult leader so that i'm giving you all the information for us to make what you call an informed wise decision to say okay that one you have all of five <laughs> so i'll put that one here all right so characteristics of cults and uh, it's a mathematical formula that I got from, not from my, from June Hunt. She does some good writing and stuff. And, and, and so she said, if you want to know the cults, use the mathematical formula. They add, some of them, add to God's word. All right? They will say that there's a new truth that God has given to them. New vision, they use, you know, new, they use different words. New truth, new vision, new this and so forth and add to God's word. Remember, you know, when we get to looking at a cultic leader, they are often going to claim that they are the only ones that getting the word from God, you know, the special revelation. And so people sadly believe them. And so they would know, when people give them this kind of authority, Mr. Moran, when the prophet come to you, can you see them use some of the words that were familiar, you know, prophet and bishop and all them something there. They're not going to say, they're not going to call themselves the cult leader of, you know, Albion Baptist Church. <laughs> you know, the cult. no, they're going to give themselves the names of Bishop and Prophet and His Excellency, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, they're going to give themselves names that and titles that we would be familiar with. So they add to God's word. Go ahead, Pastor Evans. Um, there was a comment or probably a question. Um, just a, a bit backing up when you're giving the press, um, what are some of the characteristics? The marks, some, right. Yeah, yeah, somebody said, um, but um, she would call any organization that does not call Jesus Christ God or deny his humanity a cult, even if that is the only one. Would that be? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. You see, that's why I said it and I'll say it again. There are even... <laughs> When you see me laugh, it's a danger, you know, because something might hit you hard. There are even some people in our churches, and not just say Hillview alone, who are misguided in Scripture. And this, this, this idea of Jesus not being God is not exclusive to cultic people. You go to witness to the average man, they're not cults, but they don't know, know that Jesus is God. The Rastafarians and others, and we even, some people are not even religious any at all. They, you go to some, um, they are just unlearned. There are some people who don't have the knowledge. And when you go to witness some people with that, what you call a sinner, unbeliever, they say, I don't believe that Jesus is God. I don't know that. And then when you show them the scripture, they come to light. 
So I wouldn't go that far to say that I use one to call anybody a cult. Because that one in particular, there are others who struggle with that too. Even in our own churches sometimes, to even believe and explain that Jesus is God. Yes. Um, but one of the things they said was an organization. So it, it, it's like it's well developed and probably a thought process, thoughtful process of um, denying his godliness or denying his humanity. Um, yeah. Yeah, and if so, it is, go, go ahead, finish. So up. it's basically not an individual, but like an organization holding to that belief, either denying his, his divinity or denying his humanity. Yeah, and, 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 and that's why I say I, I still would not call them a cult for that one alone. If it is that they have that going on for them, just check and you might find out. That's why we're going to go through marks and characteristics. They might have other things going on for them that fit the characteristics. Because, as you say, like for instance, the Rastafarians wouldn't call themselves cult. And some people don't even call them cults. But because they believe in another, uh, uh, you know, yeah, so they don't believe that Jesus is God. They believe in Selassie being God. And so, other religions too who don't believe that Jesus is God. We don't call all of the religions them cults. It's a different belief system. Just that is what makes us Christians because we believe that Jesus is God. But even in Christendom, you have some people who don't even sure, you know, about Jesus is God. But if the person wants to, wants to, <laughs> wants to label them for one, that's their business, whatever it is. But I'm just saying, it's not wise to label for just one characteristics or characteristic or one mark. They need to fit more in order for it. And as I say, even check what secular people do, not just religious, secular people, you're going to see them have their own checklist. You, so you, 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 Christine, saying something? No, I was just saying, confirming what you were saying, that an organization that holds to that belief that the question was about would really not just have one thing. Yeah. There, there would be other stuff that would yeah. make them that yeah. way, for yeah. real. And, and so we're going, to look, we're going to look at that. So the mathematical formula, some of them add to God's word. And Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Then the verse 6 says, Do not add. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And as I said to you that, there are some people who end up, they are not calls, but they end up add, add to God's word. You know, you know, God say, you know, so, so be careful. And so be careful of that one. But then, you were adding, no way subtracting. They either add to God's word. We looked at this already now, but we're putting in a mathematical formula that you can remember. They either add to God's word or they subtract from God's word. And uh, Revelation 22, verse 19, a very serious verse that still gives many of us um, a struggle to just interpret. But we're going to stick to the, e the, the easier part. <laughs> if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. If any man shall take away, subtract from the word, God is going to take away something from him. This is how serious God takes his word. You don't add to it, him going, if you add to it, he's going to punish you. If you subtract from it, he's going to punish you. All right? We're going to get back to looking at that. Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 says it this way. He, you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish. It means take away or subtract. So Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 says don't add to it and don't subtract from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. We looked at 22 verse 19, but Revelation 22 verse 18 says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Eh? If anyone shall add, Add to it. I'm going to add some serious judgment. The plagues are the, some serious plagues that are written in the book of Revelation, you know. And then we looked at what happened if somebody takes away. God takes his word seriously. So even if you're not a cult, <laughs> if you're adding to the word or subtracting from the word, 
not a good thing. God is going to take charge of that. All right? Then, not just subtract from the word. Some of them subtract from the person of Jesus. We looked at these already, but looking at another way of remembering some marks and characteristics. So they say that Jesus is not God. They say that Jesus, some of them say he's not fully God and man. Jesus was not the son of God. Jesus is not even a real person, some people say. We're not going to spend time to look at Colossians 1 and 15 and 2 and 9 and John 1. What I put these verses here are, some of you know them already. They are just verses that help to remind you that Jesus is God. Colossians, that he is the creator of all things and so forth. You know them very well. So if somebody is saying that Jesus is not God and not fully man, in him is the fullness of the Godhead dwelling bodily. All of these verses are just simply counteracting all of these points here to let persons realize that if you subtract from the person of Jesus, the Bible does not claim the same about Jesus. It claims that Jesus is God and man. And these are some scriptures that speak to that. All right? Let's keep going. Then there's a multiplication that goes on. Some, they add, some they subtract, and then they multiply salvation requirements. Some of them, you're saved by working towards something. Some of them, you're saved by reincarnation. Some of them, you're saved by worshiping people as God. Some of them, you're saved by giving money. And this one is big in, in many cults, by the way. The money, the possessions, the people, you know, sacrifice, you know, and self-sacrifice, uh, uh, sacrifice of self or others. So, they multiply the salvation requirements. You see, because we're religious people, you want, to, you want to find a way to redeem yourself. You, people who believe in the afterlife want to know how you're going to get there. How you're going to spend your eternity. And so, if a cult decides to start a movement, a cult leader decides to start a movement, he is going to sit down and try to work out some things that he knows or she knows that people are going to gravitate to. Some things will not be missing from their, I want to use the word doctrine, but I, so I'll use it. Some things will not be missing, from, let me use another word, teaching. Because they know that if people gravitate to some religion and want some redeemer and some salvation, they are going to give it to them. Even if it doesn't make no sense. They know that I'm going to have some people who believe it. And then they divide. This one is interesting. They divide the followers' loyalty. They encourage people at times to renounce family ties and certain friends. Like when the movie, Elizabeth Smart Story, I remember when I was viewing it a little before um, the meeting, I, I, I remember the wife or I don't know if they were officially married, but the, the lady that followed the man, Emmanuel, he, he said, he, the wife was kind of complaining at one point and said, I, I, I have left all to follow you. Doesn't that sound familiar? I have left all to follow you. It sounds like the disciples. And, 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 and he was still dissatisfied with her commitment. And she said, all I want to do is to just communicate to my father. A long time, I not see him. This is what they do, though. What, why, why you think? Somebody answer me. Why you think they cut you off from ties of family? Anybody? No more influence. I remember in the movie again, he brought the papers, the newspaper to the girl, Elizabeth, showing her that, you know, because they were, the parents were on the front page and whatever, and said, we're, we're, your family is looking for you. You know, we love you, come home. He brought the newspaper to her when he got her to a place of manipulation, but she wasn't quite there yet. But out of fear, she did what he said. He brought the paper to her and he said, I am like your father now. I am your, I am your parent. And he says, he brought the paper to her and she, he put it in her hand and he said, tear it up. And she had to tear it up. It's like he's saying that no more parents. I am the only one that you should answer to. So they don't want any more influence because they know that if there are some people that talk with you, you might be able to talk some sense into them. So depending on the type of cult, there are some that they, they will allow you certain things and others them just seclude you. That's why I'm watching that church we mentioned last week, you know. Watch that one, you know. Wait name again, don't remind me. The church, Pastor Evans, the church where we mentioned last week. Blueprint. 
blueprint are watching that one watch that one with the seclusion uh, him come out and say it you know we're taking away ourselves from the people and we're having our people just me i tried to imitate him kind of a soft voice you know we're taking away ourselves from the people we're not doing anything wrong this is biblical biblical is to not take away yourself biblical is to go to the people spread the gospel where you are going to do watch those yes sister moran I was saying right now there's a split with some of the Adventists and because you said take away themselves, they meet in some remote place yeah. on Saturdays. So they, they have taken themselves away from the others and like start something new. Yeah. And I mean, it's happening so often now. Yeah. We have to watch these things. And guys, remember I said this before and I'll say it again. There are some things that I keep reiterating. Some of these some of these churches never started as cultic movements but it starts with one leader who decides to go haywire and you see they would have developed a reputation with the people from before of our believability and then it's like the leader realized that these people follow me anything I do anything I say even if I want to add or subtract from the word there are gonna be some people who will believe you they, they invest their whole emotion. It's almost like them all soul into you. And then some people who go haywire now realize that and say, watch me, I go and take, you know, I go and, I go and take advantage of that. So they want you to renounce your family, your ties and certain friends. The leader takes precedence over all. Uh, they discontinue contact with society and usage of modern devices and become a recluse. All right, watch that one. All right? Not all of them do this one about, you know, the, the devices, but the idea of discontinued contact with society. And, and some of these verses are there, Matthew 28, are there to just tell you, say, that's kind of the opposite that God is telling any child of God. So if you're going to if you're going to call yourself a Christian and you become a recluse, God said, no, go into all the world <laughs> and preach and teach and baptize and so forth. No, it, it, it doesn't add up to what the scripture says. The lifestyle of a Christian in evangelism and ministry is not reclusive. It is not exclusive. It is not hidden. It's promoted. It's propagated. Amen? Uh, you, this idea of Bible believing, you're going to have, even, remember, so even the Rastafarians, you know, them embrace some parts. This is the issue with people and the Bible believing. Is that there are some people... Whether they are cults or not, they want to embrace parts of the Bible instead of the whole Bible, and that's the problem. But as you guys spoke, you know, you just brought up another great example. To, I like to, I like to sometimes um, make sure I confirm things that I said earlier. And the Jews, the Jews are a good example of people who did not believe that Jesus is God, but we don't call them cults. You can't call, you can't call God people them cults. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say you wouldn't, you can't use one. Because the Jews are a perfect example. This was said in the Bible, that they didn't believe that Jesus is God. But they're not cults, so you can't use one. Alright? So, you know, they're a perfect example of that situation. Alright? Then, let's now look at the, the idea of the manipulation by the cult leaders. What is the message of manipulation by the cult leaders? Uh, the major characteristic of all cult leaders is the belief that they alone have the one true message from God. Now, if you're, now we're talking about a cult leader. And so if you want to know, determine if this is a cultic leader or not, the major characteristics, characteristic of all cult leaders is the belief that they alone have the one true message from God. That's how they hook the people and manipulate the people. If bishop not tell you what to do, we not know what to do. And, and bishop and, and prophet want you <laughs> to make sure, say, you only come through him. Let me just put it this way. It can happen in two ways as a cult leader. They either have some supreme being that they appeal to. This is how they look. They put it out now. That they appeal to and they are the one true messenger. Or they claim to be that supreme being. I want you to understand that. Two different things. Some cultic leaders claim to be God themselves. 
while others still cultic, but they are, there's, there's one supreme being, and it must be the God of the Almighty God, but one supreme being that they claim to be the only channel. No other DB DB person can, you know, can, you know, you, you're too local. You have to come to me to talk to the big man. Yes, brother. Evans. And, and that's a prime example with the um, Jehovah Witnesses. Yeah. Right? Um, every interpretation of the scripture has to come through the head. Yeah. Right? If, 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 if how they interpret it, that's how it has to go, go about. So if we bring another interpretation to them, they said, we have to go check with the yeah. first. And then they come back and say, I saw this a person say. Yeah. Right? And even with the latter day scenes, um, John Smith or Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. Right? Remember, it was him alone who tr so-called translated the Bible. And when they asked him, where are the instrument that you use? Him said, the angel, take it back. But still, <laughs> he can't retranslate it for them. And yeah. that's how the Mormons have their Bible. But yeah. it just shows both those two sects that how cultic they are. How the, everything has to go to a certain person. You can't understand the scripture by yourself. Yeah. They have to interpret it for you. Yeah, yeah. So, so let, let's keep looking at this. The manipulation that exists by cult leaders, they present themselves as infallible authorities requiring absolute loyalty. They persuade through their strong, charismatic personalities. And I'm telling you, you know, a lot of them are, they might be stern to the people, some of them stern and strict and firm to the people they lead, but you see, to the outside world, they're not going to start on strict sign now because why you think I'm trying to? I'm not trying to recruit you. So you're, you're not, the outside people not going to see that. So they're not, are they, trust me, they are the best actors and actresses in the world. So they will do everything and, and, and they say, boy, you, you, your bishop nice, your prophet nice. Hello, Dr. Queen, how are you doing today? And, and everything, yeah, man, because they might look for recruit you. So they, they, they will bite them tongue off. If them begs or whatever, if them upset, them not going to show it. They want to be so personable. But you say after them win, you know, and them show so them hook you, me say all kind of stuff them, 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 them want to do. You, I rule here. And by the time them get you to that place, and them tell you, say, them run things. You don't hook down liar, you know, so you say, oh, bishop, I talk to me, so. But you say, well, a bishop anyway. You don't hooked. G yes, go ahead, Mr. Um, Moran. I've seen, I've seen a couple and this part to mind so vivid is one where a group of people from a community and he was so caught up with him, he was paying attention and all that. He might need a mic change. Yeah, and, and as soon as, soon as he, he got into the family and got her settled, as soon as she was settled in her mind, that bishop had eyes only for her. It went on, for example, like for three months. And he realized that there were younger ladies there who looked equally well. So his eyes got um, diverged from, from she. And then she began to open up and understand that he was just about messing with all the females. Because mm -hmm. she, he, was, he was contented with her. She being a, a, a more mature woman. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he saw younger ladies and, and, and she came to the realization that this man was a fraud mm -hmm. so in terms of his manipulating skills yep. they do that after a while and, and, and sooner or later somebody who is not all that convinced or it might be a personal station where jealousy gets it cause them to see things from a different angle yeah man they, they are smooth talkers man trust me the bigger the cult usually the char charisma of the cult leader the bigger the cult the bigger the charisma of the, car, the, 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 the cult leader, it's him, him or herself. The idea of, uh, they, are, they are smooth talkers. They are very nice to people. All right? Sir, you ever see a woman cult yet? Woman cult uh, leader? Cult is a woman, yeah. A cult person, leader? Yeah, yeah, sir. To be honest with you, that's a good question, you know. I have never seen one, but you know, to some of you using her just in case. <laughs> but you know, so that... That's a very, anybody ever see one? I call women, female, I, I should say they, they think they exist, you know, but me just never, those are never highlighted, yes. Basically, um, history has shown, I don't remember, but it was a husband and wife. Yes. Both of them. Yes. Right, we're, I'm doing it. So, um, 
so, so it wasn't a woman by herself. It, she and her husband and the two of them were in it together. So she wasn't brainwashed. The, both of them consented to do it. So it, it, it was a, the, the two of them, but not a, I haven't seen a woman alone. I need to look somewhere. It's worthy of, go ahead, finish up. Sir, is the man, I'm not trying to, is the man, the man who wants to have 10 wives and the wife of the keeper, so of course. It's yeah. always, a, even if they start with a wife at the beginning, the man end up having another 10. Mm -hmm. that's the, that's the yes, we're going to talk about it. Yes, Brother Omar. Um, it is not likely that you would see a woman Coach being leader. portrayed as representing, but you have instances where there is a woman behind the scene manipulating the the so the man is presented as the face okay but the influence of of the woman mm -hmm. um and we see that not only just in terms of cults but in terms of leadership uh in in different organizations and so forth i mean prime, stick to cults though <laughs> uh, no what i'm saying yes, is that yes. no what i'm saying if if you follow the principle yes it is applicable to cults as well yeah um because strange enough it's interesting that these deviations from christ has to have a a male representative and representation because from scripture the whole setup of authority runs through the man exactly and and when we realize it you know some of these um cults and stuff there tends to be a lot of emphasis on on male leadership mm -hmm. um some of especially even in instances where you find them deviating from scripture and so there's a lot of emphasis on on the men because we have to understand that the the enemy understands yep. the, the the whole idea of the flow of authority that yeah. god has set up and ordained mm -hmm. and he uses it yep because one of the reasons for even at, at the local church where, when we struggle with a lot of things we are realizing that our men in churches aren't stepping up to the plate. Mm -hmm. and, and even though the grace of God is carrying us through because God's church will not go down, we cannot deny the fact that if the men were standing more, there would be greater, um, well, I don't want to say display, but you'd see more happening in terms of how the church ought to be heading mm -hmm. um, like that. Yeah. And it's worthy, of, it's worthy of research too. I'm commissioning myself to do a search on that female cult leaders and to see what pops up. We are definitely saying that by and large, it is the men. We, we, nobody knows to hide. We're not having statistics for that. The, by and large, it's the men. And the greatest cult leader I said to you last week is the Antichrist. Because by and large, people on a whole gravitate to male leadership. And, and the men know how to manipulate some women, some men. Yes, you have more? I was just saying. I you found something, you Google something? Glenn Go ahead. Clementine Barnabet, leader of the sacrifice, of the Church of Sacrifice. Uh, take off your mask and read that information for me, please. Clementine Barnabet, leader mm -hmm. of the Church of the, of the Sacrifice, still a highly controversial figure. Barnabet was a young black woman in the 1900s. Why should she be black? <laughs> When she allegedly began the Church of Sacrifice, the voodoo cult was an offshoot of a Christ-sanctified Holy Church congregation in Louisiana. Right. So you found one. Clementine, she name? Clementine Barnabas. Right. So they are few, but far-fetched. But at the same time, they are around. Which is why I made sure that I say his or her. Because anything possible. But by and large, it's the men that are doing it. All right? They prohibit individual freedom, expecting unquestioned obedience. I say you must do this and don't question the bishop, don't question the prophet. You know, you know, they, you know, don't, is that, you, you know, is that you're going to do this or you leave? And some of them, you know what is interesting? Some of them know where, it's like they study the people, you know. 
They know what manipulative tactic to use. Some people are so loyal to the thing that they don't want to leave. So they will tell them, say, if you don't, we will excommunicate you. And they end up doing to stay in. While others them say, this is not going to work with, this not going to work with Verona. So they might go find another tactic for study you and for keep you in one way or the other. There are different tactics they'll employ. Sometimes it's the un overhanded one. Sometimes it's the underhanded one. Sister Verona, I noticed that, um, you know, things look a little grim with you, uh, you know, and they start to just, you know, come with some things. Things are bad at the church here now, and, and we would really need, you have an insurance? <laughs> you have life insurance? But I tell you something, there are many mouths here to feed, you know, <laughs> you know, so they, they, depending on what they need to do, they will do it, all right? Let's keep looking. Manipulation by cult leaders. They promote themselves as divine or as God's sole agent on earth. I said that to you before and I'm saying it to you now again. That you understand that they either take on two roles, a cult leader. Either they are the divine God themselves or they are the sole agent. Remember, I know two bulls can run, run in a one pen. So it's either they are going to assume that they are, uh, they are God or they will assume that the communication to the supreme being, all being only through them. So they're not going to have anybody else doing that. Not going to have anybody else. No other brother, no other sister. We have to be careful with those words, but you understand what I mean. You know, the idea is that even if this one is the right-hand man, the right-hand man still not, is not that agent. Them alone. And the right-hand man is normally very loyal, you know. Very loyal to them. So therefore, where is the bishop? Where is it? If you kill him, if you kill her, yeah man, yeah man. The right, the right hand man or right hand woman, these are the ones that they are totally brainwashed, blinded, everything. They sold out to the thing, to the movement. They will do anything without question. They possess new truth. That's what they claim, eh? From God or from themselves. While perverting biblical truth. Yeah. They provide simplistic answers for complex problems. All right? So watch out for these manipulation by cults. It's two set of people. You have one set where really can't read for true. And you have another set where can't read and don't read. Am I making sense? Or they, yes. they don't allow them to get to have Bibles. No, man. But you see, Bible are not, Bible are not a big thing to get. In other words, remember... I don't want to call them names. The, the, the Pathway International, you know what many people were saying about them? They said them people that don't read them Bible. They have one. But remember too, it, it goes deeper than that, my friends. That even when you have a Bible and you believe in a man, when you read it, you know, and you say, but this looks contrary to what Bishop just said. And then you read Bishop's sister, you come to Bishop and say, Bishop, I know so it say. Bishop say, who are who you listen to? I know so if you interpret and then change it up. So you have some of them who, they might question something and then bishop or prophet also say no, and so it's interpret. So it's either some of them can't read, and then some of them don't read, and then some of them do read, them still put their weight of, the, the, the authority, sorry, of interpretation on the cult leader. People must, that's why, you know, just I'm telling you, up, up to this man, I'm saying, nah, debate with nobody again. You know, in other words, me will present my view. If the thing is difficult to prove, me, me will leave you to believe that because if you believe that, me can't change your mind. The idea is that authority of interpretation of the scriptures does not rest on Pastor Madden. That's all I'm saying. I, 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 I will not claim that I have all the answers to the truth of the Bible. I cannot do that. Because there are still some things I am struggling with. So anybody who comes here now and start to behave like a them are the sole authority of interpretation of the Bible, watch out for them. If me gone and somebody else come and start to behave that way, watch out for them. Fire them at the same time. <laughs> yes, Brother Mark. Um, Marlon raises and I'm not let him speak. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and speak, Marlon. Good night, church. You guys are hearing me? <laughs> the wall is too, and the cricket is too. 
well, you know, I guess what, you know, the last point you just made is a, is a good one. And I think it's one that, you know, we as a church probably should look at, like, the, the idea of the authority. As you said, you're not the, the, you're not the final authority. However, there are many persons who would, as you, you rightly pointed out, um, you know, who are quoting from the scriptures. They're using the scriptures. And in some sense, they would sound like any other preacher. They would sound like you. So, you know, I'm wondering if, because most churches are so detached from, their, from the history of the church, it has led to, you know, people, anybody can come and just say, thus says the Lord. But then, and they're saying things that sound like it's coming from the scripture, but on a historical level, you know, the fact that we have a history, the church is actually, it's not a new development. It's been around for, you know, after Christ died, the church continued. So there are some, tri some, tri some what I would say, there are markers that keep us in line. And if any deviation from it, any deviation from orthodox theology, orthodox teaching, is an indicator that you are actually a cult. So, I, 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 the fact that most churches are so detached from history, that's why you find that there are so many influxes of false teaching, people claiming to speak from those from from the scriptures. So that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So that, yeah. Go ahead. You finish? Sorry, I thought you were finished. You're good. Yeah, I'm finished. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for your input. Indeed, my friends, we're going to wrap it up here for tonight. Pause here for tonight. But I'll, I'll end with a scripture verse that is a, a warning. And when we pick up back after the Easter break, we will continue to look at the marks of the cult characteristics and the, in the idea of even the cultic leader himself. And even we're going to be looking at how to help somebody, how to, you know, the solution to the problem rather than just identifying there's a problem how do we help people how do we even if you know somebody or if you are if you are deviating bring you back and so we're going to end with scripture tonight uh, chapter 16 of the book of romans verse 17 and 18 says in the king james version and then i'm going to give you another translation after this says no i beseech you brethren mark them it says pay attention to them um, take note of them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and what avoid them these are not people you're going to run to these are people to run from for they that are such serve not our lord jesus christ but their own belly meaning their own appetite their own desires and by good words this is the cultic leader no no and fear speeches deceive the heart of the simple the word simple there means the innocent people Another version says it this way, another translation, and then we'll stop there. It says, I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites or their own desires. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. People who don't know much. And usually those are the people they target. In, in conclusion, just for tonight, every now and then, some of you might even get the calls too if you have a special landline. Every now and then during this time, the Jehovah's Witnesses call <laughs> during the Easter time. Watch out for that too. You see, they are going to try to find familiar ground. I hadn't gotten a call for a while. I remember last year I got a call from a Jehovah's Witness. And I said, he called my landline. I said, how oh, you get my number? He said, look in your directory. I said, chuck directory. <laughs> so I said, you know, I, I, and I introduced myself to him and so forth. And then I told him where I stood. And he said, oh, man, you're well learned, man. I said, yes, I'm a Christian, a pastor, and a Bible college teacher. He said, oh, all right, fine. Last week, and he never called back after that. Last week, I got a call from another Jehovah's Witness. And I, and I said, how oh, you get my number? And I said, the directory. I said, and, and, I'm not going to call the person name, but I remember the person name. I said, you know such and such. She said, yes. I said, all right, make him tell you about me. <laughs> because I had a conversation with him. 
And she said, oh, all right. Me said, I am a pastor. I am a Christian. I'm a Bible college teacher. We're not going to have any more conversation. With no, man, it's all right. I was just telling you about the Easter and inviting you to our Easter service. You know, it's a time for Jesus. And we must, you know, we must recognize Jesus and, you know, you know Easter, the whole Easter. They do that. That's not the first time. So you watch out. They, they, they use, I don't know if they still do it. They print pamphlets. For the Easter time, and go around and say, we must recognize the Easter season that Jesus died on the cross. And so, you see, they're not going to deny certain things in a brother queen. They're them not going to deny that Jesus died on the cross. It's true. So watch these things. They will try to hook you with some familiar grounds. And then when they hook you, then they turn green lizard by you. All right? Let's stop it there for tonight. We're going to pray if there are no more comments, questions on, online. Yes, sister. Prayer for. Mm -hmm. Yes. Into this. Yes. And basically separated. Mm -hmm. You feel it's a cultic movement, you mean? Yes, but it was okay. the black Jew thing in Canada. Okay, okay. And I mean, I know it's hurting my aunt, Holy. Her dad is now very sick. Mm -hmm. And I mean, nobody's seeing her. Mm -hmm. Number of things that you know, just some of the things that you've brought out. Yes, she's withdrawing from them. Well, she has withdrawn, not wow. visiting or anything, because the last time I went, yes. she just stopped by to see me. Yes. But like, where, where her practice, I'm not sure what's happening with her practice now, but where she lived, she sold the house and moved now into a, like an apartment or many floors up. I mean, it's, it's hurting us a whole lot, mm -hmm. especially my aunt. And you said, who was a relation? Your cousin, you said? Are you? Yes, my aunt's daughter. Okay. Her name is Lisa Duffus. Okay. But it's, it's her husband, and I mean, yeah. it's, Pastor, it's really hurtful, trust yeah. me. Yeah. All right. So let's pray. And we're going to pray for that person and some others who you might even know. You can call them in your own prayer that are right now being sucked into the cultic movement. And some of them are blindingly, blindingly following. Let us pray. Father, we come before you. We bring Lisa Duffus to you because you are God. <laughs> you are God. And even though uh, they have your word, there are some people who are so deep into it that they need a special reach of your Holy Spirit to pull them out of it. So we bring Lisa to you. And we ask, dear God, that you will pull them out of it, pull her out of it, dear God, that you will rescue her before things get real bad, before things get to the point of being detrimental for her for the family help dear god this recent event that took place that revealed things in october with the pathway international church so-called that thing opened up a can of worms to let us realize that in jamaica we are not different from the world in the direction of cults and there are more that are popping up. There are more that are hiding away as well. God, we ask that you will expose them. Those persons who have been blind, following blind, blind, blindly. Lord, I pray that you will help them, dear God. Reach out to them. If there are persons who realize what's going on, family members and friends. Lord, give them the, 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 the wisdom and the empower them empower them to also know how to reach them and what to say because some of them have gone into demonic activities too and some of our some of the people who see these things are going to need to be powered up themselves because if it becomes occultic where it's satanism and so forth we need to be prayed up and powered up to fight and then to help and rescue so god we bring them before you we know you are going to take care of the cultic movements and the cultic leaders and so we will leave you to do that we don't even have to pray much about them you have already stated in your word what you're going to do to them they will be 
punished, judged, destroyed. But for the people who don't know better, rescue them before it is too late, before any more lives are lost. Let us remain firm and stand fast in these times so that we will know how to help others and make sure that we ourselves are not led away and led astray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.